Let's add a custom animated block to Minecraft. Alright, we found ourselves back in the once more, and in this tutorial, we're going to be adding a custom gecko lip animated block to Minecraft. Now, this is going to be very interesting because this actually also requires a block entity. Now, we won't go into too much detail about block entities. Most of the old tutorials from 119 should still be applicable, absolutely fine. So, we will need to add a block and a block entity and all of that. And I just realized something else, and that is that we should also call gecko lip dot initialize right here. I don't know why I didn't do that, but that should also be a thing that you should do. So uh, do add this and then we can actually go into a block bench first and get all of the model stuff out of the way. So this is the animated block. It is just a custom block model right here. Once again in block bench, of course, and under the animate tab, you can see if I just play this, this is just an idle animation. The gold cube just goes up and down. That is pretty much all that we're doing here. So if we actually take a look at the gold cube, you can see that there is just a sine wave right here that is assigned to the animation time. And that's pretty much all that that this happening here so nothing too crazy but it is custom and it is animated and that is all that we need here right first of all make sure that under the plugins you have the gecko lip animation utils plugin installed that is very important and if you have that then you can go to export and export gecko lip model once again this is going to be a geojson file and we're just going to call this animated underscore block that's fine so i'm going to save that then under the animate tab we want to go to animations export animations Select the idle one, confirm. And then here, this is going to be the animated underscore block dot animation dot adjacent. And there we go. And we also want the PNG file. So we're just going to save as and save it as the animated underscore block dot PNG right here. There you go. These are the three files that we need from Blockbench. The Blockbench model and the files are going to be, of course, available to you for download in the description below. So we're going to add the gecko lip files here first, and then we're going to proceed to do all the crazy block stuff. So we need under the assets folder, of course, in the geo folder, we'd want to add the animated block Geo JSON file. There you go. That is this one right here. Then we want under the animations folder, we want to add the animation dot the animated block dot animation dot JSON file. There you go. And then under the textures, we're just gonna add this under the block textures. That's gonna be the animated block dot png. There you go. And that's going to be the three files that we need in this case. And that should be that. And now it's going to get very interesting because now we first of all want to add a custom block entity. Now block entities are basically, you know, furnaces and things like that. They are blocks that can store additional data that is, you know, more more complex basically than normal blocks. They can, however, be quite complicated. So we're going to go through this. All of the code is, of course, as always available to you in the description below in a GitHub repository. And we're going to first of all make a custom package right here. And we're also going to make a entity package. So this is going to be the block custom package and the block entity package. This is going to be circular either way. So we're going to have to go through the classes multiple times. So we're first of all going to make the animated block class. So this is going to be the actual block class, which will extend not the block class, but the block with entity class. Very important. We're going to hover over this, implement the method. This is the create block entity method. And we're going to hover over this again, create constructor matching super. What we're going to do is we're going to make a deliberate error because right now we don't have the block entity available yet. And then also extremely important, we want to override the get render type method over here. This is extremely important. And we want to say block render type dot model. If you do not do this, your block entity will be invisible. So you have to do this, otherwise it will not work. All right, then we can take this class and actually already register this. So let's just duplicate the red maple leaves. That's fine. This is going to be the animated underscore block. And this is going to be the animated underscore block. And this is going to be the animated block. There you go. And we don't need a sapling over here and the animated block class here we also wanted to make the constructor public there you go and then no more error here and here we actually want to change something as well we do not want to call the register block method here we actually want to call registry.register so what we want to do is we want to say registry.register passing in registries.block comma and then a new identifier we're then going to say tutorial mod mod id comma animated block and there you go so there's going to be a lot of red over here that's fine we can just delete the mod item group there and then this should be fine this is not going to be a copy of the sapling we're just going to take a dot of and then we're going to say material probably not egg i think that stone makes the most sense there you go Right now, the reason why we need to do the registry.register manually here is because we do not want a item associated with this animated block. We actually have to make the item custom 
in our item class because the item is also going to be animated. So we're going to basically go through the same thing that we've done with the animated item for the animated block item. Like I said, there's a lot of stuff over here. But now that we have this, we can go into the entity class and we can make the animated block entity. There you go. And this is going to extend the block entity class and it will also implement the geo block entity. There you go. I'm going to hover over this again and implement the two methods right here. And we're going to hover over this again, create constructor matching super. For the constructor, what we want to do is we want to delete the first parameter here. And we just want to make a deliberate error once again. And we're going to fix that in just a moment. For the time being, what we then can do is all of the gecko lib stuff. So the gecko lib stuff, once again, is just going to be an animatable instance cache right here. We're going to call it cache. And this is going to be equal to a new singleton animatable instance cache of this. We can then return it right here. We've seen this previously. This is basically always the same idea. We also want to overwrite the get tick method over here and return. This is going to be the render utils dot get current tick. Absolutely. That's fine. And then in the controller and the predicate, well, we can do literally just the same thing that we've done so far. So register controller dot add a new animation controller of this. So passing in this, I'm going to call it the controller. And then we're going to have zero transition ticks and it's going to be this colon colon predicate, which of course doesn't exist. So we're going to create this again. This is pretty much the same thing that we've gone through previously and multiple times now. So we're going to say the animation state dot get controller. So we're going to get the controller. We're then going to set the animation to the a new raw animation dot begin. Then after that is the case, we're then going to say idle. So this is the name of the animation that we've seen. And we're going to play this in a loop style. And that is going to be that. We're then going to return play state dot continue. And that is pretty much the entire thing done. So this is all that we're doing with the block entity. We're not doing anything special. The general idea is just that in Gecko Lib, you basically need a block entity in order to actually animate it. And now we can make a new class in the entity package. And that's going to be the mod block entities. There you go. And that is going to look kind of like this. So we're going to have a public static block entity type. This one right here of type animated block entity. This is going to be our animated underscore block underscore entity. There you go. And then we're going to have a public static void. And that's the register all block entities method. Now, this is what I have found that works. So basically, you're going to have a particular method here where we will now actually take the animated block entity field and we're going to, well, register it. So this is going to be a registry. And this is going to be, this is registry, very important from NetMicroft registry, making sure to choose the correct one, not the one from Java RMI, as always. Registry that register registries dot block entity type comma and then a new identifier. So this is pretty much a similar idea to well registering anything. That is the identifier animated underscore block underscore entity. And then after the first closing parentheses, comma fabric block entity type builder dot create animated block entity colon colon new. Uh, and then after the new, immediately after the new comma mod blocks dot animated block as the first closing parentheses dot build and then cl uh, closing parentheses and a semicolon to end it and there you go now this is quite complicated don't worry what if this is quite complicated don't worry once again this is to do with block entities and because we're not going into too deep into block entities, I will actually link the block entity tutorial that I have in the right corner in the card. And then also, of course, all of the code is always going to be available in the description below in the GitHub repository. So you can double check if anything doesn't work, right? If, if you maybe forgot a closing parentheses or something like that, if there's an error there, you can always take a look at that. It can be quite complicated. But once again, this should be hopefully fine. But right, then in the animated block entity class, we can then say mod block entities dot animated block entity right here. That will finish the block entity class. And then here we can just say a new animated block entity passing in the position and the state. And that will finish the block class, the animated block entity class, and the mod block entities class as well. And the mod blocks class as well. This is absolutely amazing. We're just rushing through classes. But here, what we need to do is we need to call mod block entities dot register all block entities. And that will also finish that. Now that's all fine and well. However, we still need the client stuff, and that is going to be done in the entity package. We're going to make a new package called client. And there we're going to need two new classes. And we've seen these classes before. This is the animated block model class. And we also need the, can you guess it? The animated block renderer class. Exactly. There you go. Now the model class, of course, looks exactly the same as all of the other models before. Geo model of type animated block entity. Hover over this. 
implement the methods and it's going to implement the same methods that we've seen previously. Now I will just copy over the return over here because at this point it's just an ident identifier. This should not be confusing at all, right? This should be fairly self-explanatory. These are just the three files that we have exported from Blockbench and we're just pointing towards them. Nothing crazy going on here. And in the animated block renderer, this is going to be the geo block renderer of type animated block entity. And we're going to create the constructor matching super. And then instead of passing in the model right here, we're just going to create a new animated block model. And that is also done there. Now the renderer actually also needs to, of course, be connected. So in the tutorial mod client class, we want to say block entity renderer factories, yes, dot register, passing in mod block entities dot animated block and then animated block renderer colon colon new. Right, oh yeah, this is an error you're gonna get because in the renderer actually, instead of having nothing in the constructor, you actually want to add block entity renderer factory. So entity renderer, not factories, but factory dot context. And then just calling this context over here and then the error should go away. Yeah, that's very important here. And that is pretty much what we need for the block. So if we were to place down the block inside of the world, all of a sudden, bam, there it would be and it would be animated. However, inside of the inventory, not so much. So what we still need to do is we still need to add an item. And for this, we're going to make a new custom item. So this is going to be the animated block item. And this will extend the block item class. This time, very important because this is associated with a block, right? We're going to want to place a block down when we right click with this item. This is implements the geo item in this case. And we're going to hover over this, implement the methods over here. And then we're going to create constructor matching super again and that should be that the first thing we need is the animatable instance cache here again so this is gonna be the cache and this is equal to a new single animatable instance cache passing in this we also want a private final supplier of type object called render provider and this is going to be equal to a geo item dot make renderer passing in this again in the get render provider we can then just return the render provider in the cache over here we can return the cache in the register controller we pretty much want to do exactly the same thing that we've done in the animated block entity so we can literally just take the register controllers over here the predicate we can literally just copy it over because it is going to be exactly the same. As you can see, no errors present because it is going to be exactly the same. It's even exactly the same name because it's going to take it from the same animation file. So that is why this is going to be exactly the same. We once again want to override the get tick method. So this is going to be the get tick method. And we want to say right here, render utils dot get current tick. There you go. And then the only thing that is not done is the get is the create renderer method right here. And that is absolutely correct. One thing that we also want to do, and that is the we, in the animated block item constructor, we want to call a singleton geo animatable that registers sync animated animatable this. This is also the case. And if you're asking where does all of this craziness come from? Well, what you can actually do, by the way, is you can also go into the gecko lib classes. So for example, the geo item, right? If I click on this and I middle mouse button click on this, you can see I can go into the geo item class. And what I can even do is I could press control H and I can take a look at all of the different classes that gecko lib comes with for examples, right? So I can be like, hey, how does the jack in a box work? And you have all of this stuff available right here to basically take a look at this. So you can see there are even comments that help you understand what everything means. I highly recommend doing that as well if any further clarification is needed. Now the create renderer we can't do yet so we're just going to make a deliberate error once again and then we need to add the block item renderer and the block item model. So in the client once again we want to go to the animated block item model and then we also want to make a animated block item renderer there you go now those are going to be pretty much exactly the same that we've already seen before so nothing too crazy but regardless it is still going to be very very crazy so this is going to be the geo model of animated block item this time very important and we're going to implement the three methods once again for convenience sake, I will just copy this over. The code is as always available to you in the description below in the GitHub repository. So no worries at all. Once again, it's just three identifiers. Nothing crazy is here. This is literally exactly the same content as the animated block model. So it just points to the same three JSON files or there's two JSON files and the uh, PNG file. And then this is going to be the extends the geo item renderer of type animated block item and hover over this and we're going to create the constructor matching super this one right here yeah there you go deleting the model over here and this is going to be the new animated block item model absolutely 
So that is going to be all that we need. In this case, we do not want anything in the constructor. That is correct this time. And now we can use the renderer that we've just created instead of the item class right here. And we can say consumer.accept making a new render provider. This is going to be an anonymous class. So we want to choose this one and we want to overwrite the get custom renderer method. This is exactly correct. Instead of here, we're just going to make a private final animated block item renderer or renderer with just a new block animated block item renderer. There you go. And then we're just going to return that. That's that's pretty much all that there is to it. This dot renderer. There you go. And that would be that. And this is going to now animate the item inside of the inventory as well. For this, of course, we still need to add the item. So that's also very important. So this is going to be the animated item block item. Very important. So we're going to duplicate this. This is the animated underscore block item. This has to be named the same. So this is going to be, this is very important. This is going to be animated block. It has to have the same name that the block has, right? So this is the animated block. And this also is the animated block. Extremely important that those are the same name. And then this is going to be the, anim and this is going to be the animated block item with a first parameter being mod blocks dot animated block and then just fabric settings and there you go and that is the item added now in this case we still need a some json files here so of course the lang file just block animated block over here that's going to be totally fine but what else do we need well we actually need a block states json file now this is in theory just a normal block states json file for purposes of demonstration i will add it right here so we're going to say block states and we're just going to copy the json file over you can see so as you can see this is the basically the absolutely normal json file right block states json file nothing crazy going on and we do also need a block and an item model for this so we also not need a block model file, right? It's actually also something we get from Blockbench and the way that we get it is to export this. If this does not appear, then make sure that under the Gecko Lib model settings, you have to set to block an item. So we actually also wanted to export the display settings right here. So there's the animated block.json file and that's going to be the block model JSON file. All right, so we'll just copy this over. There you go and you can see, you know, it is a normal... It's basically one of the block bench JSON files that just makes sure, you know, that the display and stuff like that is correct. That's pretty much all that there is to it. And then the item model JSON file actually is just a normal block item model JSON file just basically pointing back to the block model. That's pretty much all that there is to it. And now after quite a few steps, we are finally done with the animated block. So an animated block is much more complicated, as you can clearly tell, than a, almost an entity even, because you have to have a block entity. Now, if you already have a block entity and you want to make it animated, then of course, adding this is actually pretty trivial, all things considered. But yeah, those are pretty much the steps. So let's go into the game and see if it works. All right, I found stuff in Minecraft again. And of course, I forgot to add the animated block to the item group again because this is changed in 119.3.4. Uh, you know, that sometimes is still a thing, but no worries. We can just give ourselves the item. So we're just going to say this is going to be the tutorial mod animated block right there. There you go. And you can even see it already is animated. And if I set it down, you can see there you go. So because you can see through this, we can actually fix this pretty easily. So you can see there's a see-through right here. There, uh, We're going to be able to fix this. No issues, but you can definitely see it is animated and it looks pretty freaking awesome already. Let's go fix the see-through and also let's go and add it to the item group. But adding it to the item group is, of course, literally trivial. We just need to add the animated block item right here in the add items to item group method. That should be like literally nothing. And the actual... The see-through is also actually not that bad in the mod blocks class. We just want to go to the animated block and we want to call the non-opaque over here and having this will now fix it. And those are all the steps to add a animated gecko lip block to Minecraft. Like I said, quite involved. I will agree with this, uh, but that is basically, well, the price you have to pay for an animated block. There might be vanilla ways to do it. However, with gecko lip, it is much easier because in vanilla, it basically requires a crap ton of trigonometry and all that. Uh, and that is quite complicated as well. But that concludes this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new and I'll see you all in the next tutorial. So yeah.